Okay, bond valuation, second part of the lecture. Zero coupon bonds. A zero coupon bond is a bond with a uh, coupon rate of zero. So the bond does not make any coupon payment. So this bond has to sell at a discount. So if a bond has promises a face value of $1,000 in 22 years, and the yield to maturity for bonds with the same risk characteristics is 6%. The price of the bond is 277.51. I mentioned it a couple of times so far, but I often say bonds with the same risk characteristics. So government bonds do not have the same risk characteristics as corporate bonds. And even within corporate bonds, all these bonds do not have the same risk characteristics. So there are bonds uh, uh, with a rating of A, bonds with a rating of, of B, bonds with a rating of C. So depending on the rating, the risk is lower or higher. And the higher the risk, usually the higher the yield to maturity. So government bonds are often considered as risk-free bonds. So the yield to maturity to be used to discount their future uh, payments are considered as risk-free rates. Okay, now the yield curve. Okay, so so far we have seen, we have calculated the price of bonds using a yield to maturity, that is, using a constant rate for all uh, the coupon payments as well as the face value. This is the yield to maturity. So the yield to maturity, what is the single interest rate we can apply to all future bond payments uh, in order to obtain the bond price? Well, these yields to maturity have to be consistent with the yield curve. Okay, so the yield curve is a description of all the interest rates that should be used for different payments to be received at, to be received at different uh, periods in time. So the discount rate I might I should be using for a payment to be received in two years is not necessarily the same as the discount rate I should be using for a payment to be received in six years. So these two uh, yields might be different. Why? Because maybe the economy is slowing down, maybe the economy is expanding. So usually the shape of the yield curve, whether short-term rates are higher or lower than long-term rates, depends on the optimism of bond investors. As bond investors are optimist, uh, have optimistic views about the economy, the yield curve is upward sloping. And when bond investors become pessimistic, the yield curve is either flat or slowly descending. But a bond price has to be consistent with the yield curve. If we find a bond price which is inconsistent with the yield curve, well, a bond trader may take advantage of this opportunity to make free money. Okay, so this is what we call a, an arbitrage opportunity. Okay, we'll see how it works in the following slides. Okay, so we have a bond uh, with a four-year maturity, a coupon rate of 3%, a face value of $1,000. So a yield to maturity of 4% has been applied to this bond, which gave us a price of $963.70. Is this price consistent with the yield curve? So a bond trader sees this price and then will compare this price to the price obtained <coughs> when all the coupon payments and the face value are discounted using the rates that appear on the yield curve. So the yield curve tells us whatever you receive in one year should be discounted at 3.5%. Whatever you receive in two years should be discounted at 3.6%. Whatever you receive in four years has to be discounted at 4% and whatever you receive in uh, four years has to be discounted at 4.5%. Okay, for the bonds with the same characteristics as this bond. 
So, so far, I mean, or throughout this course, I mean, we, we, we may only talk about risk-free bonds. So, so, so these, sh should, these could be all uh, government securities. So these could be government securities that have been issued at different periods in time, which may be why momentarily uh, some of them may be missed price. Okay, but mispriced. But, but then what could happen? Okay, so now we see we apply the yield on the, on the yield curve to each of these payments. So the first $30 is discounted at 3.5%. The second $30 is discounted at 3.6%. Uh, the, the third one at 4% and the last payment at 4.5%. Okay, note that these are rates. These are annual rates. Okay, so 3.6% is not the single rate of interest you apply from time zero to two. It's an annual rate of 3.6%, meaning that when you discount whatever you receive, you expect to receive in two years, you discount it at one plus 3.6 to the power two. Okay, and same here. When you discount whatever you expect to receive in three years, you discount it at the rate one plus 4% to the power three, okay? So everything to the power, so these are annual rates. When we apply the yield curve to the payments expected from this security, we obtain a price of 947.32, which is below 963.70. Okay, so what can a bond trader do when this happens? And sometimes it happens, okay? So first, Always remember that the bond market is a highly liquid market and is populated with uh, traders with big pockets, okay, banks, governments, uh, like huge institutions, insurance companies. So they all play uh, in this market. This is a market where people have a lot of, a, a lot of confidence in other players. So BMO has a lot of confidence in RBC. RBC has a lot of uh, confidence into uh, all big insurance companies in Canada. So when someone sees that the price of something is too high, it's super easy to sell it short, okay? So a short sale is, I don't own this object, but I sell it, okay? So to sell it, what I do is I borrow the object from someone else, I sell it with the promise of returning, returning the object later. Okay, as an individual, if I want to sell short a stock, how would that work? Okay, I deal with a broker, Bank of Montreal. This is, this is my broker, okay? I use Bank of Montreal to trade stocks on the stock market. I see a stock which I believe is overvalued. So the actual price is $30, but I made my calculations and the correct price should be $20. I instruct BMO, I say, hey, I want to sell the stock, but I don't own it, so that I want to sell the stock short. BMO says, sure, no trouble, okay? So what, what I'll do is I'll borrow this, I have a client who owns it. I'll borrow it from this client, I will sell it uh, to the market, okay? But meanwhile, this client will not know that his shares have been sold. Okay, but he doesn't need to know, okay? If ever a, a dividend is paid by this company, uh, the short seller pays the dividend to the actual stock owner. So this, the actual stock owner still owns the stock, but the physical shares are not in his account anymore. Okay, so, it's, so there's only like a, a, a property right that remains, but the shares have been sold to the market. So the short seller, instructs uh, his broker to sell some of the shares he doesn't own. The broker borrows the shares from another client's account, sells the shares uh, to the market. But then after a while, the short seller has to repurchase these shares, which are then returned to the account from where they have been borrowed. This is a short sale, okay? Uh, the person from whom the shares have been borrowed will never know it. That will never know that these shares have been borrowed. I mean, if, if that person 
while the, 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 the short sale is still on, if this person sells uh, his own shares, well, the broker will just borrow shares from another account uh, 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 and then uh, these shares from this other account will be sold because the first set of borrowed shares are being sold. And then, I mean, the so the, the, the borrowing will just change, uh, uh, will go from one account to the other. When I decide to sell short uh, some, uh, some stocks, okay, so my broker will demand that I put some money up front in my account to make sure I have enough cash later to repurchase the shares as a guarantee. In the bond market, it's way easier than that. So if BMO wants to sell short some, if a trader in BMO from BMO wants to sell short some bonds, uh, I mean, the place from where the bonds will be borrowed will not ask for much uh, guarantee. So they all know one another. So all these banks are, I mean, uh, very big players in, in a huge market. So they know the solidity of one another. And I mean, the, the, the restrictions with respect to short sales or the barriers to short sales are very low. Okay, so here's an example of what could uh, happen when uh, uh, a bond is sold short. So the price of bond A is 963.70. So a trader, a bond trader uh, calculates the, uh, the correct price with the yield curve and obtains. 947.32. So the short trader says, hey, bond A is overvalued. So the second after the bond trader sells short a quantity K of bond A. So there's K times 963.70 dollars that comes uh, into his account. So right on the short sale, so the bond trader realizes a cash inflow of 963.70 times the number of bonds being sold short, okay? So the trader does not just keep this, his money and wait for the price to adjust, okay? So the best way to deal with, the, with this situation is to buy the, correct, the correctly priced asset, okay? So I just sold short something overvalued so I'll buy, so with the cash I obtain, I buy an asset which is correctly valued. Okay, why? Because I want to profit from uh, the disappearing difference. So over time, 963 should move towards 947. But over time, the correctly priced uh, bonds will also move. Okay, so 963 may not fall over time. It might go up. Okay, uh, but if it goes up, the 947 bonds will also go up, but they'll go up even higher, okay? Because I expect that within a year, both prices will uh, converge. So bond A is overvalued and, and the bond uh, A hat is correctly valued, okay? If over time, both prices increase, well, A hat will increase more than A, Okay, so even though I lose money on the short sale, I'll make way more money with whatever I purchased that was correctly priced. Same thing with prices go down. So if prices go down, okay, so my the, the my short sale brings me a, a positive profit. Whatever I bought, which was correctly priced, generates a loss. Okay, but the profit from the short sale are going to be much larger than the loss on. Uh, the purchase. Okay, so this is this is an arbitrage opportunity. Opportunity, A is overvalued, B is correctly valued. Sell short what what's overvalued. Take the cash, put it in B. Okay, over time prices go up, down, uh, remain flat. Okay, but both prices will uh, be the same within a year. So I might lose money on one position, but I'll make way more money on the other position. So overall, my profit can only be positive. If the two prices touch themselves, okay, at, after one year, I cannot lose money on this trade. So I invest the K times 963.70 dollars into assets uh, that have a value of 947.32. What happens after one year? So. A year later, 
both prices are the same. So bond, uh, uh, the bonds of type A and the other portfolio of bonds have the same price after one year, which is P1. What's the profit on my short sale? So when I sold short, I received K times 963.7. And when I repurchased the bonds, okay, to return them to their owner, I pay K times P1. Okay, so this is the profit on my short sale. If P1 is larger than 963, I lose money on the short sale. If P1 is smaller than 963, I make money on the short sale. That's fine. And the return on the bond portfolio. So I have a bond uh, portfolio that provided me with a return of the new price is P1. The initial price is 947 divided by 947. So this is the percentage return on this portfolio. Okay, because I put the full cash. So I didn't buy exactly K units of these bonds. So I just put all the cash in a bond portfolio. Okay, that provided me with a percentage return given by this uh, formula here. So what's the total profit for the trader? So the dollar return on the short sale is K times 63 minus K times P1. And again on the second portfolio, so I've invested a total of K times $63.70 into a portfolio that provided me with a percentage return of P1 minus 947.2 over 947.2. So my total dollar, dollar return on this portfolio is K times 963.7 times 1 plus R. Okay, if I rearrange everything, I can see that this return can only be positive. Okay, so from here, my total profit is K times 963.70, okay, plus 963.7 over 947.2, which is a number larger than one minus one times P1, okay? And this can only be greater than zero. So here there's nothing, I have K times two positive number. So my payoff can only be positive if both prices meet, okay, after one year. If both prices are still away after one year, my profit may not be positive. But here my profit is positive if, if both prices meet after one year. This is what we call a, an arbitrage opportunity. Profit is guaranteed, no out of money uh, expenses at the start. So I, I, didn't, I didn't put any cash to begin with. I borrowed shares, I sold them short, boom, I get cash. Cash was invested in something correctly priced. Boom, at the end of the year, I make money and I didn't invest anything. So if these opportunities exist in the market, bond traders will jump on them, okay? Because it's too easy to make money with these uh, opportunities in the bond market. And the number of bonds, of, of the overpriced bonds uh, short seller will sell can be um, um, uh, can be enormous, okay? So if all bond traders decide to sell short uh, the overpriced uh, bond A uh, because it's overvalued at some point in time, well, that will put pressure on the bond price because every bond trader will be willing to, to sell it. And this, this price will have to, be will have to adjust uh, very rapidly to 947.32 and vice versa. So if I make a price calculation with uh, the yield curve and I obtain a price which is below, uh, uh, which is higher than the actual bond price, okay? So the yield curve tells me, well, this bond price, this bond is undervalued. Well, all bond traders will go and buy the bond like crazy, okay? Uh, with money obtained from selling short uh, identical bonds. Uh, but if all traders decide to buy this bond because it's undervalued, this will put pressure uh, towards uh, 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 upward pressure on the bond price and the bond price will eventually reach its correct value. Okay, and 
this would be okay so this would be the end of this uh, second so I'll make I'll make in fact that three videos so, so this so I'll finish this second one here and I'll begin the yield curve after